Most of the guys that recorded in the Big Easy found their way to Cosimo Mataza's studio. These days, Mataza's old recording studio is a laundromat. Only a brass plaque and an inlaid mosaic on the floor indicate anything out of the ordinary ever happened here. But it did. The New Orleans sound was made by musicians. Musicians who crafted the blues out of their life experience. Well, one musician who played here was Eddie Jones, stage name Guitar Slim. Born in Mississippi, moved to New Orleans where he eventually recorded for Cosimo Matassa. His music and his life still reverberates through New Orleans. Slim was a showman first and foremost. He became known for attaching a 350-foot cord to his guitar and marching out onto the street to play in front of traffic. Happy and upbeat in performance, Slim personified New Orleans. This is Rodney Armstrong. Also born and raised in New Orleans, Rodney makes a living playing some original blues tunes, but also a lot of the guitar Slim repertoire. He even sounds a bit like Guitar Slim. He certainly looks like him. Understandably, jeans will out. Rodney's father was Guitar Slim, and his stage name is Guitar Slim Jr. I never called myself that Earl King read a song called Trick Bag. He started uh, calling me that like in 65. I used to hang, around, hang with the old blues players. And he started calling me Guitar Slim Jr. Rodney was 14 when fellow musicians began calling him Guitar Slim Jr. He was resistant at first, but has gone on to fully embrace the name, even deciding to follow in his father's footsteps. Rodney's a Grammy-nominated musician for the album The Story of My Life. A musical tip of the hat to his dad and his father's tragic history. A history Rodney understands all too well. It's uncertain how many kids Guitar Slim fathered. Dad, I got this guitar. Just as it is uncertain how many wives and girlfriends he had. At the time of his death in 1959, at the young age of 32, the pastor didn't think he had any kids. When he died, it was all over the radio. I went to the funeral, and I'll never forget as long as I live. And the preacher said, yeah, he don't have no family. And the old lady said, yes, he do. He got two sons, and one of them here now. And that was my first applause. I walked up to the, to the pool pit, and everybody went to clapping. And I seen him in the car, and I wanted to cry, but I wanted to cry so bad. Rodney figures he was about five the last time he saw his father. His memories of Guitar Slim Sr. are few but crystal clear. My daddy was on the go. I remember he had a Cadillac, and uh, he come pick me and my mom up, we'd go to Tipito where he was playing, but uh, I'd never seen him play, I never. And uh, we went down, and he used to send me down to for spaghetti and meatballs. Guitar Slim Sr.'s big hit, The Things I Used to Do, produced by Cosimo Matassa, became a blues standard. Some say it helped open the door to soul music. He played the famed Apollo Theater in New York. He jammed with Muddy Waters. For a while, things were great, except for his drinking. But the fame faded, and the drinking increased, and Guitar Slim died of alcohol-related problems in New York City. Rodney understands that. I don't do drugs, but I never did drugs. I, I, I like drink, you know. I mean, drink now. I passed drink, guzzling. In Rodney's case, there was one person who stepped forward to help him kick the booze. Another blues guy by the name of Stevie Ray Vaughan, who gave Rodney a gift, an Al-Anon book, to help him sober up. The last time I saw Stevie Ray Vaughan, I was at Jazz Fest all day. It was, it was for me to see him. So we sat down and talked about the, the, cause he had, he was clean. So, I was dirty. 
do a drink and chill. Now, I remember somebody gave me a ride from the Jazz Fest. And some dude called me and say, he said, Slim, you left a book in your car with some man named Stevie Ray Vaughan. So I said, well, bring it to me. But I forgot who he was. I, I, you know, I still drinking, forgot about it, and, never, and I, I never got it back. Unlike his father, Rodney managed to sober up. It ain't no game. It take practice and being serious, you know? But uh, I ain't going that route no more, you know? I'm gonna drink and pardon. With sobriety has come some peace and a bit of prosperity. The Grammy nomination and a new album. The blues can be good and the blues can be sad. You can have somebody that you really love die, you know, and you feel it. Or you can just get married and have a good blues feeling. You know, it, it blues go off so many different ways.